Hello, welcome back to The Natural Spinner. I realized after the last video that I uploaded about the combing the Angora that I had forgotten to really talk about when I was holding it and showing you the finished top that I had pulled off, um, how all that handling kind of messed it up. And I didn't really talk much about that. So I figured I would start with where I was putting on the second combing pass. Um, and then diz it off again to show you just one more time. It seems that dizzing is the hardest thing to master with combing fiber, and Angora is one of the more challenging fibers to comb, let alone diz. Um, so this has been combed already once, and these are on, of course, my Valkyrie Superfine. And I already talked about the fact that I usually just do the Angora in small batches on the combs and I never really transfer it to the hackle to try and get really long strand because Angora doesn't work as well like that. So the second combing pass is put back on the combs. Take off a little bit. I always have a bag here where I put my first combing quote waste although it will be further processed and something that people often forget to do is to take a small piece of paper or tape on the bag or or um, magic marker right on the bag whatever works for you and label what your fiber is because trust me you think you will remember <laughs> If you just have one fiber in your entire stash, it might work. But if you have more than one or two, something of the same color, more than one Angora, you will forget what it is. So it's always better to label everything. Just thought I would mention that because I have been guilty of forgetting to label things and then go back a few months later, look in the bag and think, uh-oh, what is this? Oh, I think it's that, but it's not. So... <clears throat> I have my, I should have it on this side. So this has been combed twice on the combs. And since it's Angora and super fun, I'm gonna use my, not the smallest, that's really too small. I'm gonna use this one. And as you've seen before, my natural method is just, I'm right-handed, but I start from the left and I just pull a little through, if I can get that through wrap it around, pull it through, and I'll go through the dizzing process again. So all these fibers are touching each other and they want to grab a hold of each other to a degree. So every time you push your diz towards the fibers, it's going to be pulling neighboring fibers that might not necessarily be, of course, in the piece that you're holding, that you're holding right here. So you pull back a little, not the full length, only about halfway or so. And then when you push back up, you're actually going to be including some of these neighboring fibers that aren't already in the piece that you're dizzing. And you just pull, push up a little. It's going to pull in some neighboring fibers. Pull, push, pull. It will always grab the longest ones first. So if you have mixed length of fiber, which is usually the case, no matter how uniform it is, there will be some shorter pieces. Um, you might have, if you want to include it all, you might have to angle it back a little bit and go back a little to pull in the shorter ones if you want them. So you push and you see in my left hand, I'm holding this fiber. I'm not letting it go. A lot of uh, fibers, you can have a, a basket, a bowl, a tub, something underneath if you're doing a really long top that you're dizzing off, say the hackle. This is going to be a short piece on purpose because of this fiber. This will not hold together very well. When I'm finished, I will show you. I'll talk more about it like I intended to do in the first Angora combing video. So I'm just going to finish getting this off. Push, pull. Okay. 
Okay. You can see there's little bits of undesirable stuff there in the end. I hope you can see that. I'm going to sort of pull it off. And it's going to go along with this in my bag here. And that goes back down into the actual fiber bag. So, go back this up just a little bit. Okay. So you see how you, how it is. It's it's together. And it looks all like it'll hold together, but it will not. If I start to handle it, it'll hold together as I hold it up. But if I continue to handle it, like I was doing in the last video, I was sort of you know doing this. As I was doing that, it was actually starting to come apart slightly and not be so, you know, together anymore. It's just the nature of this super extremely fine fiber. The micron is so low and each fiber is so delicate and fine that it just starts to come apart. Some of it's static. This is very staticky fiber. Or it becomes easily made sort of static thing. So the more I touch it, the more it's coming apart. See how it's sort of it's opening up as well? Because when I had it in my hand, I was squeezing and holding it together. So that's what the importance of as soon as you're done dizzing and getting it off, to put it immediately into a bag for storage if you're not spinning right away, or go straight to your wheel and spin it right away. Now, this I just leave sort of almost like I... If I hadn't been showing you how it sort of comes apart, I would have kept it in my hand tightly. And then I just take a plastic bag, you can use a, 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 a container, whatever you have, and I would hold it tightly and I would put it in the container or the bag and just keep it like that. And then add to it as I'm combing for as much as I wanted to do at one time, if I'm not going to spin it directly. So that falls apart easily. And here's some Corydale just to show you the difference. This I combed just a little while ago. And it's Corydale is a wool, a sheep wool, and it it holds together very well. I can ball it up, I can ball it up, and it stays together. It doesn't start to come apart. I can undo it and keep doing that and doing that and eventually it'll start to a little bit come apart but it holds together much better than the Angora. So this, you know, I can... I don't recommend really balling it up for long-term storage. It's better to leave any fiber I've found. I used to do that but now I, I just sort of... I open them up and I'll do the same thing. That'll sort of go like this also in a bag. So I just wanted to show you all that and um, clarify about the fiber and the storing of it and all. So if you have any other questions, I think I covered everything. Um, although I did want to show you my combs, my setup a little bit. If you can see that. I've got my extra fine here, and an extra fine comb, and there's stationary comb. Okay, right there. <laughs> and then, of course, here, which you have seen before, I have my super fine hackle. Right there. Right there. I'm using my iPad. It's not very easy to use. And then the comb that you just saw me use there. So, hopefully that will clarify the storage and um, help you a little bit with combing Angora. It is a challenge to comb. You have to find, first of all, Angora that's long enough to comb. You have to have combs that will allow you to do it that are fine enough to actually hold the fiber. I could not do this on the extra fines on the other side. It, it simply wouldn't work. The fiber is so fine that it would just pull through. The combs would not be able to hold onto it as I'm combing, it would just all pull off. So you do have to have fine enough combs for it to work with. And then when you're finished, either go directly to your wheel and spin it, 
or if you're going to use it to blend with something on a drum card, you could either do it right away, you could put it on a blending board, um, or if you just need to store it, don't try to ball it up because as you try to unball it, you know, to unwind it, it will stick to itself and it won't come undone like this, just comes right apart. The Angora will not. So, anyway, I just thought I would add this little bit and hopefully I'll be able to get this video up for you. And uh, do not hesitate to contact me, ask me any questions you may have. I will reply as soon as I get your message. And thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.